Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some new discoveries in regards to the magnetic field of planet Earth, and more specifically a discovery of a somewhat unusual and somewhat unexpected cycle that seems to change the magnetic field of our planet every 200 million years, while at the same time changing how the magnetic field seems to flip around the planet. And all of this also explains a few other mysteries, including one of the extinction events that happened a few hundred million years ago, that now the scientists believe very likely happened because of the magnetic field. So let's talk a little bit more about this, starting with the extinction event itself. So roughly around 360 million years ago, and for a period of a few million years, the Earth experienced one of the big five extinction events, this one known as the Late Devonian event. But it wasn't just a single event, it was actually several events that happened one after another, with each of them affecting different species and different types of species differently. And one of the more unusual and well-known victims of this extinction event was this strange-looking fish known as Tiktaalik. A fish that sort of looks like a mixture between a fish and a crocodile, and it was very likely one of those fish that learned how to get out of the water and to possibly even walk on land. But what exactly caused these different extinctions during the period of several million years? Well, it seems like there was no one single event or one single source. As a matter of fact, this is one of those somewhat mysterious extinction events that was very difficult to explain until I guess more or less recently. And mostly because of this study and a few other ones that pointed out at something that nobody really noticed before. A lot of the fossils from this period, specifically fossils of various land plants, seem to have a lot of different UV damage, or even mutations caused by ultraviolet radiation. It's as if a lot of these plant spores were somehow damaged by the extremely high doses of UV radiation. And although it might suggest some sort of a supernova event or maybe some sort of a space-related event that might have happened not so far from the planet, a more likely explanation back then was actually the reduction of ozone layer and possibly even the reduction of the magnetic field itself. Which is exactly what some of the recent papers discovered as well. The magnetic field during this period was actually much much lower than today, anywhere from half the strength up to about a quarter of the strength. Which sort of implies that back then Earth was not a very good place to live on, with most likely only deep oceans or maybe some caverns providing enough protection from all of this UV radiation. And specifically, a lot of studies analyzed the levels of mercury and a lot of other components in the fossils to establish that no other major event could have caused the extinction in this case. It could not have been some sort of a space event, and it most likely was not some sort of a volcanic event either. It must have been the sun itself. And interestingly enough, all of this then resulted in a major ice age on the planet. This is sometimes referred to as the Karoo Ice Age. In this case, the loss of the ozone layer might have caused some of these climatic changes. But that's not something we're going to be discussing today. What we are discussing is one of these papers that established there seems to be a pattern and also some sort of a cycle planet Earth goes through every 200 million years. And a lot of the results from the study come from the investigation of various rocks and various deposits located right here in Scotland. The paper in the description below provides the actual description for what each of these colors mean and what actual date they represent in the study. But in a nutshell, it represents the era between about 330 million years ago and approximately 416 million years ago. And the first unusual discovery was that the Earth's magnetic field back then was actually much weaker than it is today. Once again confirming that very likely this might have caused the extinction event and all of the damage from the UV light that we're observing in some of the samples. But we also know that the magnetic field and the magnetosphere shifts and changes all the time and even occasionally flips. Generally though, it's believed that in the last 83 million years, the planet went through approximately 180 different reversals or magnetic field flips. There's no actual explanation for why they happen and there's no real understanding behind them, but the samples from various rock deposits confirm that this happened many times, with the average time between flips being about 450,000 years, but the last magnetic flip occurring 780,000 years ago, meaning that we're kind of overdue for the next flip. But if we expand the timeline to several hundred million years, we'll start discovering something else really unusual about the way that the magnetic field behaved in the past. It's a little bit easier to see it on this timeline right here, with the stripes representing the flips. 
And so if we start going back in time, you'll notice something really unusual happening approximately 83 million years ago. We reach a period when there's actually not a lot of flipping, as a matter of fact, no flipping whatsoever for tens of millions of years. But then it returns to the flipping again. Yet at the same time, in approximately 200 million years, it reaches the next long period where no flips occur and the magnetic field seems to be pointing in the same direction. We refer to these two events as superchrons, officially defined as a period when the magnetic field does not flip for over 10 million years. And the two most well-known superchrons are referred to as the Cretaceous Normal and Kaiman. And well, up until this paper right here, nobody really knew what exactly is happening during those superchrons and why the magnetic field sort of remains constant during that time, and at the same time why the magnetic field flips so much in between superchrons. But the new analysis from various ancient lava flows located in Scotland confirmed the original prediction from approximately 10 years ago. Our planet seems to have a 200 million year cycle when the magnetic field doesn't just flip, it also weakens and strengthens. And when it strengthens, the magnetic field does not flip at all. It creates what we refer to as the superchron which can sometimes last for several tens of millions of years, which also means that during that period, our planet very likely is completely sheltered from a lot of different space radiation, or at least from the solar radiation and a lot of solar emissions. But in between the superchrons, we get the weakening of the field, and during the weakening, that's when the magnetic field starts to flip back and forth. Now, the actual mechanism is not well understood, but it seems to be directly correlated with the much weaker magnetic field on the planet, which means that by weakening the field, it somehow reduces the stability and forces the inner core to possibly change something on the inside and shift the magnetic field from north to south, from south to north. Now, like I said, we don't really understand the mechanism, but this is what's implied from the paper and from the analysis based on these rocks. And one of the more important discoveries here is the confirmation that whatever happened 330 to 400 million years ago, when the actual magnetic field dipped by quite a lot, seems to also happened exactly 120 million years ago. Once again, suggesting that this is a cyclical event, and it very likely is going to repeat in a few million years from now. While at the same time suggesting that right before the superchron, when the magnetic field strengthens and sort of lasts in the same position for a very long time, the magnetic field weakens the most, which also implies that the magnetic field of the planet might start weakening more and more in the next few million years, eventually reaching very low levels like approximately 120 million years ago and approximately 360 million years ago. And so this unusual connection between the strength of the magnetosphere and the magnetic reversals is somewhat unexpected but also somewhat important. This sort of connects a lot of different events, including the climatic changes, including the extinction events, to what seems to be a cyclical nature of the magnetosphere that once in a while seems to become weak enough to make the planet somewhat vulnerable. But naturally, we don't really understand a lot of these effects or what causes any of this. It's of course something related to the conditions and the interaction inside the planet, but what exactly happens we don't really understand. But in the next few years we might come closer to finally answering a lot of these questions and possibly being able to even predict some of these events in the future. For now though, all of this once again shows us how important the magnetic field of the planet is and also how our planet seems to have quite a lot of undiscovered cycles with some cycles being extremely important for the survival of the species on the planet. Although I guess for now that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the papers I mentioned in the description below and check out some of the previous videos on this topic as well. Either way, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.